So uh, today's session is explaining the difference between a normal good and a given good and why they don't have identical income consumption curves. Before we uh, move to the topic, let's first concentrate on the textbook difference between normal good and given good. So in case of normal good, we have an individual increases the consumption of normal goods if the price of the goods decrease. So let's say every month you buy a toy worth uh, $10 and if the price of that toy drops to $5, then you will probably start buying two of those toys every month. In that case, as the price of the good fell, you started increasing the consumption of that good. And then in that case, the toy or the toy that you're collecting is essentially a normal good to you. Almost all general cases of goods fall under this category. On the other hand, on the other extreme, we have given goods. So an individual decreases the consumption of given goods if the price of the goods decrease. This is essentially an exception to the law of demand, as you can see from the definition. So let's consider a scenario where you're a toy collector and you collect two different types of toys. So one of the toys is a, a cheaper version and they are of poor quality and the other toy that you collect, they are of higher quality. Of course, they are more costly. Now, if the price of the cheaper toy falls, then you, instead of buying more of the cheaper toy you can cut down the cut down the consumption of the cheaper toy altogether and start increasing the consumption of the uh, more poor, more greater quality and more expensive toy so what you're doing is you're substituting the cheaper good with the more expensive and of better quality good so in that case the cheaper good that you are uh, sacrificing or the the cheaper good that you're not buying anymore that is a gift good to you so you're de reducing the consumption of that given good when price of that good, that given good itself is getting reduced. Uh, set par, of course, your income cannot change and the prices of other goods cannot change. So this is an exception to the law of demand. So like in general, when we have law of demand saying that if the price of a good increases, you reduce the consumption and if the price of the good falls, you increase the consumption. In case of given goods, if the price of that good increases, you increase the consumption of that good. And if the price of that good falls, then you reduce the consumption of that good. Um, I might do a video on given good later where I will be explaining and uh, kind of ex yeah, explaining and illustrating the classic example of potatoes and meat, which was exactly used to explain the concept of given good. So, yeah. The next thing is we'll uh, follow certain definitions before we move on into the topic. So we first start with the income consumption curve. This income consumption curve is a curve in a graph in which the quantities of two goods are plotted on the two axes. So we have one good, let's say X marked on, let's say the X axis and another good Y just marked on the Y axis. The curve is the locus of points showing the consumption bundles chosen at each of the various levels of income. So as you go on changing your level of income, you might change the consumption bundles. You might increase one of your, increase the consumption of one good and reduce the other, or you can uh, increase the consumption of both goods. So based on your preferences, you will have a certain, prefer, certain pattern of consumption bundles following different levels of income. The income consumption curve essentially plots or tracks these consumption bundles throughout the changes in the income. The next is the price effect or the total effect. So this uh, price effect is essentially, it represents the change in consumer's optimum consumption bundle on account of change in the price of a good and thereby changes in its quantity purchased. So there is parallel, that is price of another good and consumer's income and all other factors remain unchanged. So it's basically uh, one of the prime factors of the law of demand. So when the price of a particular good changes, the effect that uh, we see on the quantity demanded and the quantity purchased of a good is uh, tracked by the price effect. So that effect is called the price effect or the total effect. Now it's called a total effect because this total price effect can be decomposed into two parts. The first part being the income effect, which expresses the impact of increased purchasing power of consumption. So what happens is, let's say the price of a particular good falls. If the price of that good falls, then essentially you have more disposable income in your hand. You have more purchasing power because you're not spending that much amount of income on that good. So you have, you can spend more. You can spend more money on other goods or that good itself. So you have an increased purchasing power and you have an increased amount of disposable income at your hand. That 
increase in the purchasing power might affect what you're doing with your uh, rest of the money and that might dedicate that might dictate your uh, preference so that that part that portion of the uh, preference change which is caused by the change or alteration in, in purchasing power is called the income effect because it's affecting your uh, relative income the other part of the total effect is a substitution effect which describes how consumption is impacted by the changing relative affordability so when one of the goods become more expensive or less expensive relative to some other good so one of them becomes more cheap there's a chance that you might buy more of those cheaper goods and there's again possibilities if there are different goods involved then you might drop altogether the consumption of the cheaper goods so this part that that considers the changing relative affordability of the two goods deals with the substitution effect part of the total effect so we have total effect which is uh, divided into income effect and substitution effect now let's uh, start with normal goods so for normal goods we have uh, this diagram as you can see we have a complicated diagram here but we'll take it slowly and we'll try to understand what's going on so uh, let's uh, look at the diagram on the top half the top panel so the curve a b 1 no the curve a b is the initial budget line so let's say we have some price p x of the good x which is taken on the horizontal axis and some price p y which is the price of good y which is taken on the vertical axis and we have some income uh, i hope you know the basic uh, illustration and the concepts of budget line if not we'll discuss it later uh, we have a budget line a b which uh, is representing the equation px into x plus py into y equals m next we have the initial equilibrium at point m that, that, that's uh, yeah that's this point if you see and uh, this point this point m is essentially the point where the budget line ab meets the highest indifference curve ic1 so it's the point of tangency essentially between the budget line and the indifference curve and uh, that essentially illustrates the initial equilibrium point now let's say there's a drop in the price and by a drop in the price of good x essentially we mean that the affordability of good x has increased so we can buy more of good x there's an increased affordability of good x in that case the budget line ab pivots around point a and moves rightward not moves rightward it's rather turns or it rotates rightward to form the new budget line AB1. With the shift or with the change in the shape of the budget line, we have the new equilibrium at point N, which corresponds to the highest indifference curve IC2. So when the price falls, the individual increases the consumption pattern to from M to N. So we move from this point to this point. Now what we'll do is we'll break this total effect, which is the transition from M to N into two parts. So what we'll essentially do is we'll make an income adjustment such that the individual has initial utility achieved at the reduced income. So the initial utility was uh, represented by IC1. And what we'll do is we'll reduce the income of that individual to, le to a level such that that particular IC1 utility is achieved. So we essentially shift down the new budget line to a level which is tangent to the original budget line. So we reduce the budget line to CD because CD is the budget line which, is, which has the same slope as the new budget line AB1 but is tangent to the initial indifference curve IC1. If we do that, then yeah, that's the adjusted budget line is CD and the, fine, the point at which this adjusted budget line meets the initial indifference curve is the alternate equilibrium or it's the intermediate equilibrium point r this equilibrium point r is the point through which we'll track the differences between the substitution effect and income effect which are the two main components of total price effect so the individual essentially with the price change the individual essentially moved from point m on line a b to point n on line a b one that was the total price effect that uh, happened due to the price fall of the good X. 
but we'll decompose this price price effect into a substitution effect which is the movement of the individual from point m to point r and the income effect which is represented by the movement of the individual from point r to point n so you see substitution effect move, allows the individual to move from m to r then by lieu of income effect the individual moves from point r to point n and when we add the substitution effect and income effect we see that the individual moves from point m to point n through the uh, the totality of the price total price effect so that's the concept of normal good now if we come to given good we will see a slightly different not a slightly different scenario there's a there's a reversion in the direction of movements so it starts the same way we have the initial budget line ab and uh, we have the initial equilibrium at e where the budget line ab meets the indifference curve highest possible indifference curve ic1 and we again consider a situation of price fall and in this case the new budget line is ad1 so the individual is at equilibrium at point e2 where he achieves the highest indifference curve ic2 again we will do the same kind of income adjustments such that the initial utility uh, initial utility level is achieved at the uh, reduced income so the line the budget line ad1 shifts downward to cd which is tangent to the initial indifference curve ic1 so we move to the point e1 so the adjusted budget line is cd and alternative equilibrium is e1 now if you see the individual actually had moved from point e to point e2 so the individual had moved in a rightward direction in a leftward direction it had moved from right to left that was the price effect so you see as the price of that good fell the individual essentially reduced the consumption of good x so he stopped in, even though the affordability of good x increased he reduced the consumption of good x that is that itself is a that it's a exception to the law of demand that this movement of the individual from point e to point e2 is the prime determining factor of given good so let's now decompose this price effect what happens is a substitution effect which moves the individual from the first initial point to the intermediate e1 point is still from left to right so the individual by substitution effect is still increasing the con uh, his income uh, his consumption of good x so he's still moving from e to e1 which is moving movement from left to right so the direction of substitution effect is the same for normal good and different good but the income effect pulls the individual back to his left so much so that the entire movement is to the left so as the in individual moves from e to e1 through substitution effect the income effect is stronger and it it essentially nullifies the substitution effect and it pulls the individual backward from e1 to e2 that is from left from right to left so what we essentially have is this income effect is stronger than substitution effect in case of given good 